If you want to try out Linux but don't want to install it over Windows, you're in luck because this video will show you how to give any version of Linux a test drive within minutes. So let's dive in. Alright, let's get started. This process is very easy and it will only take a couple of minutes to set up and have you testing any version of Linux that you want within just a few minutes. Uh, it's super cool. Check it out. So we're going to open up a web browser here and we're going to search for a program called VirtualBox. Now VirtualBox is a free and open source hosted hypervisor for x86 virtualization developed by the Oracle Corporation. What that means in plain English is that this allows you to create virtual drives within your computer itself so that you can test run these operating systems. You can test run Linux, you could test run uh, other versions of Windows if you wanted. But it's a very handy tool uh, and it's free and open source. So you're going to want to go to virtualbox.org. You could just type it up in the address bar or you can search for it. They both get you to the same place. So Oracle VM VirtualBox. Left clicking on that will take you to the website. And right out of the get-go, it'll bring you to the website. You can download the latest version right here, uh, VirtualBox 6.1 at the moment. Left clicking this will lead you to a list of download options and we're going to choose Windows host for those running Windows. If you're running uh, Mac OS or another Linux distribution, uh, you can choose whichever platform that you're running. In this case, we're running Windows 10, so we're going to click on Windows Hosts. It's going to open up a save window, and we're just going to save it straight in the Downloads folder here, and just click on Save. Right now it's downloading the installation program. And once it's done, uh, you can either click and run it straight from your browser, or if you wanted to open up a file browser, and uh, in your downloads folder, you'll see the application showing right here. Uh, both of those will work. In this case, I'm going to just run it from the downloads folder. and it's going to start the installer. We're going to run through this real quick here and we can click on next at the bottom. Uh, it's good, it's more than fine to install it in the default location so we can click on next uh, and you can choose to create start menu entries, uh, create shortcuts on the desktop. If there's any place that you don't want shortcuts, I personally don't like shortcuts on the desktop so I uncheck that but you can choose whatever you prefer and click next. Now it is going to temporarily disable the networking in order to set up the networking drivers that it needs so that the operating systems that you install using VirtualBox will still have internet access. So just be advised it is going to disable your internet for a couple of seconds while it installs. So once you have that out of the way, uh, once you have that secured and you're ready to go, go ahead and click yes to proceed with the installation. And finally you can click install. And of course Windows user account control wants to ask do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? And yes we do. It's going to start the installation process. If you have a decently fast machine this shouldn't take long at all. And it's done. So now that's done, you can uh, start the Oracle VM VirtualBox and click Finish. And it's going to start the program. So here we are. This is the main window for VirtualBox. And from here, you're going to be able to manage all of your virtual machines that you create. So you could install multiple instances of Linux. You could have different Linux distros that you're trying out uh, all at once. Super handy feature. Uh, it's a great tool. So let's start with making our first uh, virtual machine. So we're going to go to new over here. And we're going to name the operating system. This isn't super relevant, uh, but it just allows you to better organize them when you're creating multiple virtual machines. So from the drop down 
You can uh, select Linux if you're trying a different Linux distro. And you can choose the version if you want here. It, it does come with uh, a list of the popular Linux distros out there. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose Ubuntu because that's the one I'm going to be testing and installing briefly. And then I'm just going to name it. We'll just say Ubuntu Linux. And it's going. The machine folder is going to be located uh, in uh, the default folder. Here is the user directory. Uh, I'm going to change that at the moment because I know that I am almost out of space on on my uh, machine here. So I'm just going to choose the D drive right here and click on Next. Now this is going to ask uh, how much RAM you'd like to allocate to this virtual machine. Uh, depending on how much RAM you have on your machine, you're going to want to adjust this accordingly. Uh, you can see here I have 32 gigs of RAM on my machine here and I typically slide it up to give it 4 gigs of RAM for the virtual machine. Uh, again, depending on what you have, if you have 8 gigs, you know, you can use four, I uh, probably would even want to bring it down conservatively to two gigs. You know, in principle, maybe giving yourself 25% of RAM dedicated to the virtual machine would be fine. Being that I have 32, I'm going to slide this up to four gigs, uh, but again, two is fine. So anywhere from two to four gigs, you're usually fine. And then click next. Now, you're going to be setting up a virtual hard disk uh, you can either create a new hard disk file or select one from the list of another location. In this case, because we're just starting out, we're creating a new virtual hard disk file. The recommended size of the hard disk is 10 gigabytes. So what you're going to see in the next window is that you're going to be able to select uh, and choose the amount of space you would like this hard drive to have. So what this is doing is it's creating a pretend hard drive within your own hard drive on your computer. So we're going to click on Create, and we're going to choose the hard disk file type. The VDI is fine, so we will click on Next. Uh, the storage on physical hard disk. So that gives you two options here, a dynamically allocated hard disk and a fixed size hard disk. Now with a dynamically allocated hard disk, uh, it will only use the space on your physical hard disk as it fills up up to the, a maximum fixed size, although it will not shrink again automatically when the space on it is freed. A fixed size hard disk may take longer to create, but on some systems is often faster to use. I personally choose a fixed size, and so that's what I choose, and click on Next. And as you can see now, it's going to ask where you want to save the virtual hard disk file and what you would like to set as the space, uh, the amount of hard drive space on there. So you can go as low as four megabytes, which you definitely don't want to do because <laughs> you're not going to be able to install anything on there. Uh, up to two terabytes is the limit. This is not the size of your actual hard disk. This is just depicting what the maximum size that this virtual disk can go up to. I'm going to set this back down to the default 10 gigabytes. There we go, and uh, I'm going to finish by clicking Create at the bottom here. It's going to take a moment as it creates this new virtual hard disk. Okay, so now it's completed, and you'll see the new virtual hard drive has now appeared in this left column over here. And at this point, you're almost ready to test it. We're just going to do two more things. We're going to go into settings here at the top, and from there, uh, we're going to click on display, and we're going to enable 3D acceleration down here. Uh, this allows us to access the uh, graphics GPU on our desktop to, uh, for hardware acceleration so that things work a little smoother out of the box. And we're going to turn up the video memory to 128 megabytes to allow it the maximum amount and then click OK. So 
As far as VirtualBox is concerned, it's done, it's ready to go. At this point, all we need to do is download Ubuntu from the website, and that's what we're going to do next. So we're going to open up a new tab and go to ubuntu.com. And in this case, I'm going to download the uh, latest desktop version, which is 19.10 at the making of at the time of this video. And it should start automatically. I'm going to choose to save it inside of the downloads folder. And I'm going to show my downloads. And as you can see, it is downloading. Uh, so as soon as this download is complete, I will show you the next step, the final step before you can test it. All right, so it's just finishing up. It took about seven or eight minutes, depending on uh, the speed of my internet connection. So this may be the longest part in the actual setup is just downloading the, uh, the ISO image or the image of the operating system itself. But now it is complete. You can see over here. So I'm going to open up VirtualBox again. And the last thing I'm going to do is go into settings. And in this case, I'm going to go into the storage section and where it says controller IDE uh, right here where the little uh, optical disk here is showing empty uh, it's looking at the optical drive and I'm going to click on this icon here and going to click choose a disk file it's going to open up to my downloads and you can see that the uh, Ubuntu 19.10 is right here it's this ISO image I'm going to left click that and you can see it's now showing here in this controller area and that's it I'm going to click OK at the bottom and everything is good to go I'm ready to test so all I need to do at this point is to click on start it's going to open up a new window and that's going to show in uh, it's going to give me probably some options here it's going to select, ask to select an optical disk or a physical optical drive containing a disk to start your new virtual machine from. And we already have Ubuntu 19.10 selected, so I'm going to select Start. And I'm going to maximize the window here just so I can get all of the, uh, the goodness. And as you can see, it's loading Ubuntu, uh, reading the ISO as if it was put on a flash drive or put on a CD-ROM drive. When you left click inside of the uh, box here, it's going to say that you have clicked the mouse inside the virtual machine display. Uh, this will cause the virtual machine to capture the host mouse pointer. In this case, it's referring to the host as Windows because Windows is the default, uh, the native operating system that's installed on my PC. In this case, Ubuntu is the guest. So it's letting me know that once I left click in here, I'm not going to be able to move my mouse down to the taskbar or the start menu in Windows unless I first press the right control key on my keyboard. So it's kind of giving me a warning saying, hey, you're about to be interfacing directly with this guest operating system. And uh, if you want to leave this guest operating system and control Windows again, you have to press right control first. So I'm going to and now acknowledging that, I'm going to click on Capture. And now my mouse is inside of that window. So pressing the right control with my keyboard returns it and now returns the control of the uh, mouse and keyboard to Windows. And now you can see it is loading Ubuntu. You'll see down here at the bottom, uh, occasionally there will be a green uh, icon showing below both the disk and the hard drive here so this means it's reading the ISO image disk that's in your downloads folder and it's reading it just like it's a CD-ROM or a, an optical disk drive and every time you see the green here it means it's either reading or writing to the virtual drive that is installed that you created at the beginning of a launching VirtualBox so you can see the uh, Ubuntu is loading right now
and in the uh, familiar fashion with Ubuntu you get the chance to install it or try it at this point you can operate just like you would if you loaded it straight from a flash drive or a USB drive but now this process is a lot, is a lot easier because you can download any ISO uh, any version or distro of Linux straight from the web browser whether that's uh, Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Arch or Debian or Fedora or OpenSUSE or any of those popular distros uh, or darn near any of their derivatives and you can install and run them uh, straight from uh, inside of a virtual machine here. If I click on Try Ubuntu it's going to load the GNOME shell and bring me straight to the desktop. You can also run multiple virtual machines at once. You don't just have to use one. As you can see, this is being run from inside of a uh, window. And I could resize this. I can move this around. And if I set up another, hypothetically, another uh, virtual machine over here, and I made it a different Linux distro, if I wanted to run Linux Mint, uh, and this version doesn't matter, that's more just, again, a means of organizing, but you can choose whichever you want here. You could just call it Other Linux. And set this to my D drive here. And go to Next. If I did the same thing here, so you can see, even while I'm setting this up, it's still running the virtual machine uh, in this window here. And there we go. So while it's even creating a new virtual machine, this one here is good to go. So I can I can run uh, Ubuntu. I can open up the applications. I can I can check it out. I can see if this is something I'm interested in, and I might want to install natively on a machine uh, for whatever reason I need. So you're going to notice that the window is very small over here. It's in a small resolution, and that's because it hasn't been installed yet. If you want to test these at a higher resolution, or if you want them to extend to the edges of your screen, uh, typically you'll need to install it first, or you might get lucky and you can go into the display settings and you might be able to change it from there. In this case, I can, thankfully. Yeah, that's better. Now we've got some more playing room. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, the last thing you're gonna, going to want to do, just to make sure everything's working fine for your, your testing purposes, however short or long you're going to be tinkering with this distro, you're going to want to install the guest uh, additions onto any Linux distro that you install into a virtual machine. This allows VirtualBox to talk to the Linux distro you have installed in order to have it access uh, like your GPU for hardware acceleration purposes. And you'll just get the full effect of everything's going to work nice and smooth. Yeah, so after you install the operating system, you can left click on this, you can go to Devices and select insert guest add edition cd image um, and then it's going to come up with a terminal prompt from here at, within uh, the linux distro that you're running and you can install it straight from there and that's going to give you uh, a smooth experience here but there you go that's how to test any linux distro within uh, minutes using a virtual machine software like virtualbox so thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, feel free to give it a thumbs up, uh, like it, and uh, if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to Linux TV where you can get the latest on how to use Linux and uh, the Linux operating system and free software. And uh, thanks so much for watching.